Welcome to the first episode of the Lotus 49 project. As this is the first episode, I want to start with informing everyone that I will try to keep this series software agnostic as much as I can. That is why I added logos for different software packages on the title screen. I will try to explain how I think and why I do things, rather than which buttons to press. This way you can translate the workflow and ideas to your package of choice. With that said, I will be modeling in Maya, texturing in Substance Painter and rendering in Arnold. Today we're going to talk about reference and planning. If we take a look at the project timeline, we can see that we start with reference and planning, move on to scene setup, then the big chunk of the project is going to be the modeling, um, then we move on to UV mapping to prepare for the texturing part. When the texturing is done, we can start setting up the rendering with the materials and lighting and everything, and then we make our final renders. Let's talk about some references. For this project, uh, I'm mainly going to use images and also scan data from an eBay purchase that I made of a scale model from Tamiya. So if we start with images, I usually use Google and I just change the settings to search for largest possible images and use keywords such as restoration, auction, forums and blueprints. That usually gives you a good start where you can find images like this. Moving on to my next reference, I found this uh, Lotus 49 Ford F1 1 to 12 scale, which I put together and spray painted with some uh, Tamiya light gray primer. And then I uh, took that model to my friends over at Drafts and Design in Stockholm and we actually scanned the scale model, which is going to be a really good reference for proportions. And uh, this is going to save me a lot of time trying to position things and uh, understanding the reference images of where things are located, how big they are, etc., etc. It means I don't have to go back and forth with a blueprint image and search for dimensions as much as I would have to if I didn't have the 3D reference. You basically place these reflective dots around your model as a reference for the 3D scanner and then you go around and try to cover as much of the model as you can. You can see the data recorded in real time on the computer and it's a really fun process and very very useful. And it also makes for some really cool footage like this. I'm going to take the scan data into Maya and clean it up a bit and have it positioned so that we can use it as reference for 3D modeling. I scan the nose of the car separately so that I can model and see all the details inside. And I did the same thing with the wheels as well. So if we move into Maya at this point and look at the scan data, we can see what it looks like directly from import. And it's a bit messy at this point. So I've been going over this and cleaning it up a bit and this is what we have. So while this is not the ultimate in resolution, this is still going to help me with positioning all the details and quickly showing me where everything is supposed to be and the size of everything. And since I scanned the nose separately, I can also have a look at all the details inside. 
suspension geometry and everything. Since I have this uh, scale model at my desk, I can pair and look at it in real life, which is very nice. So with the scan data cleaned up and ready to go, and our base collection of reference images, um, there is only one thing left that I need to do before we start modeling, and that is to set up a pure ref library of these images. PureRef is a super simple free software that looks like this, this black square down here. You can take your images, just drag and drop them like this, and it's gonna organize them into a beautiful big square of references. Save this as a PureRef file so that we can open it every time we work on the project. This is a very convenient way to work with references because you, you have this dedicated space on your screen. You can put it on your second monitor if you want. I only have one big monitor so I usually scale it down and put it somewhere in the corner like this. And what do here is that you can sort your images in categorized islands. So for example we have the interior images over here. We have uh, the maybe the tires over here. And you can just move around this, zoom in. Uh, you can double click on an image and you can zoom to that image. Double click out again. So it's a very quick way of organizing and looking at your images while you are modeling. So I usually bring down Maya. So that it doesn't overlap like this. That leaves me a space up to the left where I can have UV mapping tools later on. Something like this. But for now we're not going to use the UV mapping tools so we can, we can actually extend this up like this. And that means we have all the references that we need to start setting up our scene. That is going to happen in the next episode. So until then, take care, bye bye.